So this is going to be a look back at the solution we came up with for our piggy bank. I want this look back here. This is specifically targeted for those of you who are very, very new to Java, very, very new to coding, and don't really understand syntactic elements. In solving a problem, if I understand the syntax, it's so much easier than if I don't. It's just like trying to explain directions to a person so much easier if you speak the same language. If you speak just a few words of a foreign language and have to explain it to somebody who's a native speaker, they're going to have a, hard, a very hard time getting the directions from you, much less understanding what you're saying. So we've put this all together. Let's go back and look at some of the interesting source code elements. So inside of, inside of here, we start with some variable declarations. We have the type right here, double, and then the variable names, and then they can be assigned to be equal to something. And so this base weight is coming out of this class over here. We pointed at it quickly, but what's happening is I have this statement up inside of here which says, okay, I don't need to tell you that this thing comes from coin stats. All these variables over here in this interface are automatically made visible over here. So if I take that out of there, if I would take this line out of here, which I can just comment it out real quick, what I would end up with is a whole bunch of compiler errors. And those compiler errors would be pointing to, hey, I don't know what these values mean inside of here. So I would have to, every time this is there, I'd have to be coin stats dot unknown inside of there. That would fix it. But that's a lot of extra coding. It makes our code really ugly. That's the point of code the, the import static command inside of there. So that's where th that's coming from. Now in this case, base weight's actually coming from a parameter that's being passed in. I'm a little bit cheating inside of there. But that's the idea behind these constants. And I'm multiplying that by a static value. Now, how did I get to 0.97? Well, that's math. That's not Java code at all. Math says 3% of something is 3 divided by 100. So if I'm dealing with something that's 3% less than 100, it's 97%. So I can multiply it by 0.97, and that takes away 3% of the value. If I want to add 3% of the value, I type it by 1.03. That adds 3% of the value. Same thing cited here with 199 and 0.01. I, that's just a, some quick math. That has nothing to do with code. The code here is taking that base one that was passed in, which depending on the coin is you know two and a half, um, I think it's grams, five grams, whatever it's going to be, and multiplying it by those values. That gives you the upper and lower limits inside of here. So when I'm doing my comparison then, I have an if statement. The if statement has a single decision that's inside of parentheses, a single Boolean value that happens that can have any number of compartment pieces to it. I chose to say, I want to check, is it within the weight? So if it's within the weight, we're going to say, is it greater than the lower limit and is it less than the upper limit? I could have made this logic differently. I could say, is it outside the weight? And I would say, if it's lower than the weight or if it's upper than the weight, then it's not. But in my logic, I want to be inclusive, say, is it possibly a penny based off of weight? Because I have another step to do. And this is what's called nesting your if statements. So off of my if statement, I'm not required to, but it's much, much better if you have a curly bracket set beginning and ending showing everything that's inside of there. And then I have nested that inside of here just for white space so it's more readable. And I have another if statement. Again, curly brackets around a single decision that has two conditions inside of there. So a single Boolean. And there's two different Booleans that make that up. And I'm using this and and, you know, the ampersand ampersand sign here is a shortcut logic. It's not really actually required here, but you'll most often in Java see people put two ands or the equivalent is the or statement, this bar. There'll be two of those inside of there. But my logic required the and statement. The last thing we can show about this little method here is I have to return a value. So if I didn't return this value, which I didn't when I was coding it the first time, I'd get a compiler error up here that says I must return a result of int. So what we're saying is if it's you know, within the weight, and if it's within the dimensions, I'm going to return a coin. But if it's not within the dimensions, well, what do I return? If it's not within weight, what do I return? Every path through a method must return something if it says it's going to return something. It's going to get to the end eventually. It must return something before it gets there. And so the easiest way to do it is to put a return down here. I could have had if, then, else, and a return in every path. That could solve it as well. But the easiest is to have a clear return at the end that returns this value. So that's a little bit of the code elements here, the if statements. You've got to check your parentheses inside of here. You've got to make sure you don't do things like put 
semicolons at the end. This would be a mistake. This would break all of my code. This would never ever. This would always return unknown every single time. If I may, if I save this, I run this. Every single one of the test cases would end up being a little bit off inside of there because it wouldn't be calling the ones correctly inside of there. You can see all of a sudden um, my unknown test cases actually. I return uh, with this. Oh yeah, I'm never checking the weight. So I return the coin back, coin type back every single time. So in this case, my un unknowns are here because I, I have an unpredicted answer. So I must only have variances in the weight inside of my test cases. So that is what came up there. So I have to be very careful about the syntactic elements. Up here, we just have more of the same. I'm not going to go into too much detail outside of the fact when I call the methods up here. So I'm, I created this method down below. And I can create whatever parameters I want to to this method. I have one and then a comma, two another comma, three, another comma, four, another comma, five items inside of here that's being passed in. A couple of them making final, it really doesn't, it's not really needed here. I did it so that way this can be and looks like a constant. There's certain rules inside of a method where I make it final, it just means it can't be changed inside the method, it, but a different value can be passed in every time the method's called. So final here is not really required, and in most methods it wouldn't make any difference one way or the other, but sometimes it is useful, and there are examples where it is very helpful. Up here though, when I call that method, I also have to pass in five values. So I'm passing in two doubles, two more doubles, and then an integer. So the, I have to have five parameters, and they must match the types of the parameters going in. And then the rest of this is just more if statements, more logic that's going on inside of here. Again, I have another return statement for the method I'm doing. I didn't write the main method. I'm just writing this focused method. So that's a little bit about the focus on the code if you're new to this stuff. Um, a few of the things you want to just be sure of is line your curly brackets up. And the best way you can line those up is to make sure your spacing is done properly. Make sure your code's formatted very pretty like you see here. Make sure you put semicolons in the right place. Every line is the end, is, ends with a semicolon except for if statements. They don't belong at the end of there. And again, any, I wouldn't want an if, something between, a semicolon between that and my curly bracket. Essentially, for my, for my worth, a curly bracket is an extension of the if statement. So use these tips and keep playing with the code. So the logic is one thing, the code's another thing. They, when they come together, you can be very, very powerful, and then try and learn each of them as you go. As you're struggling with code and figuring out the Java syntax, you, it's going to make it harder to figure out the logic you want to get done, but you need to be able to play with the logic to understand the syntax, to be able to form the sentences, to be able to use the complexity. So just work through it, and you'll get better over time.